And I think we are a go. Let's do this. Uh, it's been a while since I made one of these, so I thought I would let you guys in on uh, what's the jam with Alistar at the moment. I have over 200,000 points on Alistar on this account, and I'm going to be going over the runes and the items that you want to run in Season 10. Let's start with the runes. So, for Alistar, actually, this is what it looks like. So, for Alistar, for your runes, the Keystone, you have one choice, it's Aftershock. This is what's most reliable, this is what most people pick. We know that this works. So, <laughs> if you're learning the champion, even if you're not learning the champion, Aftershock is super, super good. There's about 5% of people who run Guardian and 95% who run Aftershock. Amusingly, the people who run Guardian actually have a good win rate. So you can take that for what you will. But if you're... Unless you have, I would say, at least 100 games of Alistar, I wouldn't start messing around with Guardian just yet. Uh, that might be an exaggeration, you might want to experiment with it before that. Uh, you, I mean, you can experiment with it whenever you want, but if you're going to do it early, then don't do it in ranked, basically is what I'm saying. So if you're going to experiment with Guardian on Alistar, make sure it's a normal game. Uh, so that you don't destroy a game because you don't know what you're doing. So, if you want to just pick what I pick, you're going to go Aftershock, Demolish, Bone Plating, and Overgrowth. But, the truth is that all nine of these runes, except for Shield Bash, but all eight of these, you can actually use on Alistar, even Revitalize. Most people don't, but you can. It's actually viable, because you have a heal on your passive and you can buy uh, Redemption uh, and such. Lockout of the Eye and Solari, etc. Although you would never run Revitalize unless you're running Guardian, which, like I said, almost nobody does. Anyway, Demolish is the most picked rune up here. You can choose Fond of Life, it's up to you, but Demolish is just one of those feel good runes that uh, are very, very useful. So that's what I use. Here I use Bone Plating, this is also what's most commonly used for this row, although Second Wind is great, Conditioning is great. Conditioning doesn't do anything for lane, uh, laning phase, uh, for the first 12 minutes. Second Wind is more sustain heavy, Bone Plating is also sustain, but is more all-in oriented. But they're almost the same rune. And lastly, Overgrowth is the most popular rune in the last row. The second most popular is Unflinching. Unflinching is also quite often picked for Alistar. It's really, really nice. The only true argument against Unflinching is that as an Alistar player, you can actually cleanse crowd control with your ultimate, so you don't really need it, uh, uh, need it the tenacity and slow res that is. Although in practice, when you actually play the game, you figure out that that's just complete BS and tenacity is pretty much always useful. So it's up to you which one you want to go with there. I just run Overgrowth because this is very useful on Alistar. Health is just always great on Alistar, not only because of your ultimate, which gives damage reduction, which makes health an extremely powerful resource, but you will also, if you're like me and you like Zeke's Herald, you're going to be building resists for your first item. The fact is, no matter how you slice it, Overgrowth is great on Alistar. As is Unflinching, though, so it's up to you. As for my secondary, I always run Futures Market and, and Hex Flash. You don't have to, though. Uh, these are actually not the most commonly picked runes for once, uh, because Futures Market is not as popular as Biscuit Delivery, which, again, is not as popular as Cosmic Insight. So if you want to run the most the most picked runes, then everything over here that I'm running is the correct stuff, but you're going to run Cosmic with, with Hex Flash, Cosmic Insight for CDR. I have to toyed around with a lot of stuff in this tree, and the only thing I can really say is that Approach Velocity seems kind of worthless, Time Warp seems kind of worthless, and Magical Footwear is not great for Alistar because you, you want Moby Boots as quickly as possible. Pretty much the rest of the runes are viable. Uh, 
Uh, Cosmic Insight is obviously valuable because of cooldown reduction. Uh, Biscuit de Delivery, I actually ran these for a really, really long time along with Cosmic Insight. Uh, the problem I discovered is that in 90% of my games, I ended up not using the Biscuits. Uh, and the reason for that is because once you learn how to lane correctly with Alistar, you don't need them. So you just end up playing the game, and then you're like 15 minutes into the game and you haven't used a single Biscuit because you laned correctly. So if you're new at Alistar, then I highly recommend running Biscuits. Super, super powerful for learning the champion without straight up, like, destroying your lane. Um, but uh, in my personal experience, and I speak only from personal experience here, Biscuit Delivery is completely useless if you actually know what you're doing on Alistar. You don't need it at all. Then there are some people that run Minion Dematerializer just for, like, pushing power and getting rid of cannons. Um, but I think Futures Market is just so insanely nice to have on Alistar because because of mobility boots and because of other item spikes. The thing is, when you play support, you can't just decide to stay on the field for extra amount of time just because you want an item spike. You can't just decide to get a kill for yourself so now you can finish your Zeke's Herald or whatever. That doesn't work as a support. You can't just decide to stay an extra jungle camp or an extra minion wave before you base. That is why Futures Market is insanely nice. And it makes a huge, noticeable difference inside of your games. It's the difference between running out of your base with Moby Boots or with a pair of brown bags at a certain time in the game sometimes. Obviously it's not the dis the deciding factor every time, but it is really helpful to just have that extra leeway uh, so that you don't need to go back to base and go nuts because you need 100 gold for Mobius or some other item. So it's just a great rune, and especially for Alistar, who doesn't benefit particularly from any of the other runes in any huge way. It's kind of like a fluff thing where you, you just have Aftershock and then the rest is like do whatever you want because you only need Aftershock to be viable as a champion. And this is this is especially the case in this particular tree. That's also why not everyone runs Hexflash, even though Hexflash is amazing. The funny thing about Hexflash is it's kind of like Biscuits in that sometimes you just never use it. Like you'll go through a whole game and it wasn't useful. The reason I like it is because First of all, like I said, there's almost nothing else that you need, so why not just pick it for fun? And secondly, when it works, it kicks ass. Like you can net some, you can net some serious kills with this stuff. Hex flashing out of brushes that the enemy doesn't have vision in, that alone can really put people off, and it can get you kills left and right. So it's an interesting rune because sometimes you, it's kind of. Feast or Famine in a sense, like, it's not Feast or Famine in the sense that it's a risky rune, it's never a risky rune, but it is the kind of rune where you can go through an entire game and it did nothing, like, it was useless, you you didn't even use it to get over a wall in the jungle, um, and then the next game you get three or four kills because of it, like, it's insane. And also, obviously, you can use it to get over walls when you're flashed on cooldown, etc. So it's just a nice rune to have, so that's what I run. Some people like st uh, perfect timing. I find that it's kind of it kind of baits you as an Alistar because you really the, the Alistar is the kind of champion that makes you go in. You always want to go in, and then you're like, "Ooh, I have stopwatch. I can just go." And it, you know, sometimes you just kill yourself, and also other times you just don't need it because your your ultimate plus aftershock just makes you so tanky. It's like, why would I want a stopwatch, right? But it's up to you what you want to run. This is what I do. Some people are crazy enough to actually run Triumph and Tenacity. It is strong and you can do it, but it has like a 3 to 4% pick rate, so the stats on it are borderline fluke stats, because there's just the, num the numbers aren't really there to back it up. Um, but I've played with it myself, and that's how I know that it is strong and it is viable. But it's not what I do, this is what I do. And then for here, I like to run cooldown reduction, and I just run whatever resists that I need in the lane. 
If it's a pike support, I'll probably have double armor. Uh, unless they have a magic damaging AD carry, such as Kog'Maw, Ezreal, Kai'Sa, etc. Then I'll run 50-50. Um... But usually the opponents will have some sort of magic damage supports. Usually they will have a Lulu, they will have some kind of enchanter support. Even Thresh actually deals a significant amount of magic damage, especially when he clips you with, with his ulti, so... Um, but I just pick whatever defenses I need, and, and that's really it for the runes. As for the items, uh, you are an Alistar, so things are extremely, extremely simple for you. There's not much var variety or creativity for you. As you can see, I have starter items and consumables up top. There's not much to say there. Every single game I rush Mobies, no exceptions. I don't even build Zeke's components. Like, I don't even build a cloth armor or a null magic mantle. I just go straight Mobies. Unless... Maybe unless it's like a hyper toxic lane with Zyra and Ziggs or something, and they have they you know they have a mage instead of an actual AD carry, so I just rush Null Magic Mantle and then Mobis. You know there there are tiny tiny variations that you can do, um, but for the most part, just straight up rushing the Mobis is like the most important thing in the world as an Alistar. As for your first item, you have three choices. Uh, which are between Zeke's Knight's Vow and uh, Righteous Glory, right? If you're a Righteous Glory Alistar, you probably will get this item as your first item. Uh, it's really, really great. It's powerful. It's viable. It's everything that you want for an Alistar. Except that it's just not as reliable as Zeke's Herald in terms of adding extra damage to your ADC. And Zeke's... Oh, it says Convergence. My bad. I'm an old-schooled kind of guy. Zeke's Convergence is, is called Zeke's Herald in my brain. I started in Season 3, so forgive me. Um, this item I get as my first item after Mobis in every game. Because the... <laughs> the passive just makes your ally deals so much damage and the slow the a the like the little area around you that has the slow and the burn on it is super busted and zeke's herald is very powerful for that reason but you can get knight's vow before that if you want i just get it after knight's vow is super great you are a tanky melee uh support after all so there's pretty much no reason not to get it after that, I usually go Redemption into Locket, because it's the most defensive, uh, peel-heavy kind of power that you have access to as a tank support, or just as a support in general. You're obviously not an enchanter, uh, enchanter support, so you're not going to think about stuff like uh, Ardent Sensor or anything like that. Um, but Redemption for teamfights is kind of overtuned, in my opinion, and it is very, very good, it's very powerful. And uh, Locket Shield is just amazing. Amazing active item to have on your Alistar. And that is really it. You don't have that many creativity options uh, for supports. I think if you are winning the game and you're snowballing, you should consider getting Righteous Glory as your first item, because it's kind of like having an extra flash in the sense that you have an additional gap closer now. So if your flash is on cooldown, or if you can't find that hex flash timing or angle, uh, uh, Righteous Glory is uh, extremely useful and powerful. Um, you can buy it every game if you want to, truth be told. I just don't do it because... It's too expensive, in my opinion, and Zeke's Herald is super, super powerful. And also, it depends on what kind of style you have with your play style, how you actually play your Alistar. Personally, I'm more of a peeling kind of Alistar, which, from the items, you can probably tell. I mean, every single one of these items is made for peeling. Um, although, you can also aggress with them, obviously. But I do tend to play around some sort of damage carry on my own team a lot more than doing, like, 1v5 knock-up initiations, which, of course, you can do that as well uh, if the opportunity is there. Just kind of... it depends, right? We all 
It, it all depends on the game and the situation within the game, but it also depends on the style of play that you want to go for and the kind of Alistar that you want to run. Because I've seen, you know, challenger players uh, be on both ends of the spectrum. There are, there are some challenger players that are just super peel heavy, like that Rengar, that Kha'Zix that's trying to one-shot your AD carry. If the Alistar says, says no to that, you can't one-shot the AD carry. You'll get knocked up, you'll get knocked away, you'll get slowed, you'll get killed. Your AD, the AD carry will, will get helped, healed, shielded, whatever, right? But you also see uh, challenger players on Alistar that are at the opposite end of the spectrum, where they just hard initiate, constantly, constantly initiating, picking people off, catching people off guard, just going super, super ham. Um... So you have the the two extremes, and they're both viable, and everything in between is viable. And I'm personally more on the peel-heavy side, and it has worked for me very well. But uh, just know that Righteous Glory is an option, and, and playing Alistar aggressively is definitely an option. But that's it for the items. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope this was somewhat helpful. Um, these are not necessarily all of the options in the world that you can run on Alistar, but it is the most reliable stuff. This is what most people do that I'm showing you right now. So if you just want to do what we know is reliable and what we know works, this is the build to go for. I know there are crazy people out there who do uh, freaking phase rush Alistar and whatnot, and if you want to be uh, one of those people, by all means, Go and experiment with it, but please do it in normal games first before you take it into ranked. But yeah, this is the most reliable and most powerful way that I personally have found to build your Alistar if you are one-tricking it or maining it for a long time.